All right, we're live. Woo! Hey, I'm dad yet. You gad, dad. Let's see here. I'm going to have to tune to normal tuning. Uh, what was I that? Oh, I wrote a song for a, a pop kid who really likes Led Zeppelin. So I went to Dad Gad to try to come up with uh, something. <laughs> Snark tuners. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not, I'm not a very good advertiser for Snark tuners because the batteries just die so fast. If you invent a tuner, you should have an automatic off. Okay. So we're going from dad dad, I'm going to standard tuning. And we're going to go back to, hey, good morning, Holly. We're going to go back to uh, reading. But I'm, the cool thing is I can start to incorporate a little bit of the music notation in anything I teach. Because we do have foundation in it. Um, We're going to continue to work up our work up the neck and everything, and work on syncopated rhythms. But I want to do this lesson because we we talked about it. Um, I think I'm going to move this up here. Um, we talked about it. Don't need to be so big. Why are you so big? There we go. Hey, John. Good weekend. Well, yeah. stupid. Uh, uh, what is it I have? Shingles. <laughs> it's it's a combination of pain and itchy now. It's like some of the, you know, the, the scabs on my back. It looked like I got shot by a shotgun in the back, on my back. Like somebody just like, I need to come up with a good story <laughs> and then go to the beach. What happened to you? Oh, I was protecting a woman at the bank robbery. <laughs> so, something like that. Um, let's see. Hey, Joseph. Hey, Bruce. Good to see you back in the house. Good to, good to have you back home. I bet it's good to be home. Jan, thank you for joining us. John, good to see you. How my teeth look? Okay. That one's a little different, discolored here, isn't it? <laughs> people are like, wait, what? Okay, Bob Schumann, of course, most of you people are f familiar and know, A, know me and know each other. So, uh, Bob Schumann, see, I'll be here for a while before my appointment with the surgeon. Oh, gee, for follow, oh, for follow, that's right. So surgery went well, you survived. That's a good thing. Um, let's see, who else is in the house? Jack Lloyd. Good morning. Um, I'm not in the truck this week. Solid ground. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I totally understand that, Jack. Hey, Jack, so do you drive a lot? Is that what you do for a living? I just have a question. What do you do if you're really sleepy? What are some of your tricks to staying awake? I've actually fallen asleep on the road twice in the same trip. <laughs> I th after the first time it happened, I thought, oh, good, I'm awake now. I won't fall asleep. And then I fell asleep like a half an hour later. <laughs> So, and that was all before I drank coffee. Coffee's probably the key. David Sillers, good to see you. Hola. Who started the journey? Told me to subscribe and start with. Oh yeah, yeah. You're you're the one that stole me to start with. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of bring bring because so many new people here. Um. And the cage method is definitely a, a great tool, and we're going to talk about that in a second here. Um, just, well, hey, Alejandro, welcome back. Good to see you again. Uh, AJ's in the house. Aslan's in the house. Uh, yeah, and I got your test for you. Don't worry, it's coming. Okay, so I've said hi to everybody who's inserted themselves into the into the chat. So, oh, Gary, Bach, Gary Book is here. Yeah, this, this is a great sound of guitar. The Gibson Dove. A lot of ornamentation. Big giant bridge, which is interesting. Um, I got lucky. This is the first acoustic I ever bought. I was not an acoustic player. Those were for cowboys only. I got this when I was 30, so um, 
interesting that my first six string acoustic was not purchased until I'd been playing already for 20 years at that point. Someone asked me if I should, um, if they should start on electric or acoustic if they're a beginner. Hey, that's a tough question because electric is easier, but acoustic's kind of more fun in some ways early on. So many great songs you can bang away and you can learn a couple chords and you're good to go. Um, so, you know, if I did a video on that, I'd probably just tick people off because I'd probably make the case for both. Um, but, and the other thing is you're self-contained with an acoustic guitar. You can take it to the beach and you can play and have fun. And if you're having fun and playing, you're likely to keep doing it. Uh, that's always been my kind of methodology when it came to teaching. My goal was for the student to have fun um, and uh, to uh, enjoy and want to pick up the guitar and have things to work on and see progress. Um, and tend, the only time I really use the basic beginner books those kind of the Alfred's basic and everything is if the kid was too young to have any kind of taste in music. Like if they didn't know who, you know, Zeppelin was or the Beatles or whatever. I mean, if they were not because they were too young, born in the wrong year, but I'm talking about when I was teaching in the eighties or whatever, if they were seven, eight, nine years old, I probably just went with a, a standard guitar method. But if they, once they got to like 11, 12, 13, they were like definitely knew what they liked. And then, so that's always good. If you can, Hey, uh, Jay, good to see you. Um, so, um, and you know, I tried to release that song on Friday. Of course, I forgot to take into consideration how long it takes for, um, all the streamers to approve, uh, the song. So that is in the process right now. So I'm going to, I should, I should have, uh, I put, I should have put a much later release date on it and waited until after it got approved. So, so, uh, question mark, the, the, that gypsy jazz thing that I wrote, um, that will be coming out soon. And then once it does, I'll promote on all the, all the things. So, okay. So, um, yeah, do not, <laughs> don't buy a 12 string. That, that would be the last thing. <laughs> that was my second guitar and it almost made me quit playing guitar. Uh, so that piece of advice I can give you. I wanted to sound like John Denver, so. You feel up my senses. What is it? Forget the chords. Anyway, I don't want to get copyright for you. Um, thank you, Bruce, for doing the... Uh, uh, for doing the, um, the paperwork, essentially. So what is the cage method? The cage method is a method by which to see the fretboard, kind of unlock the fretboard. Because a guitar, um, particularly the guitar, well, guitar is unique in this regard. It's not... Uh, particularly symmetrical, okay? The violin is tuned in fifths, the viola is tuned in fifths, the cello is tuned in fifths, the upright bass is tuned in fourths, and so everything is pretty symmetrical. You learn one scale shape and it translates to all the all the positions and stuff. Um, same generally for some chord shapes. So if you play mandolin, that's tuned in fifths, so you kind of get a sense of, uh, oh, thank you, Bruce. I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, Hey, Catherine, good to see you. Yeah, I'm going to... Wow, we jumped up. Pin message, okay. We jumped up to 30? What, what the heck? Probably because of the caged thing. So, um, so, and I taught the cage method without calling it the cage method for years. I never noticed um, that the order of the shapes on the fretboard spelled out the word caged. Um, and then someone pointed it out to me, probably a student that already knew it and said, oh, that's the, you mean the cage method. Oh, I learned that already. And, and I went, 
why'd you call it the cage method? And he goes, well, because it spells out the word cage. And I was like, oh my gosh. I probably had been teaching it for 20 years without knowing what it was called. So, um, but it makes complete sense because the word cage, the letters in that are the order by which the cords show up on the neck. Now, if it was, if it wasn't in that order, it wouldn't make any sense to even call it the cage method. The cage, the whole point of the, of the word cage is to help you it's kind of like a mnemonic to help mnemonic device to help you remember what order those shapes come in. Um, eventually, I think you don't even think you don't even think that you just see them. Okay, um, so like here's a C chord, and then see it looks like a C chord. Here's a C chord, and it, but it's the next C chord up the neck is this one. But look, it looks like an A chord. The next C chord up the neck is right here. That's adjacent to this C chord, and this looks like a G chord. So we have C. A, G, and then the next C chord is this one here, and uh, it looks like an E form. And then the last one is this one, and it looks like a D form. So it's here, C, 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 as far as what chord it is. The shape is C, A, G, E, and D. So it spells cage. Now, this method of seeing the, the fretboard is great for soloing, but it's also great for rhythm playing. So it kind of gives you tools in both the two main avenues that you're going to play. If you're in a band and there's two guitar players, you're generally, you might alternate, but on each song, someone's going to be the lead guitar player, someone's going to be the rhythm guitar player. And also it helps you when it comes time to um, figure out songs. So if you're listening to a record, you're going, how did he play this? And you find it, but you go, yeah, but that doesn't seem right. How can I play it here? Oh, it makes more sense here, or it makes more sense here, or it makes more sense here, um, or it sounds more like the record here and there. So, um, so the usually what I do, um, and I've done since the beginning with this, is I, ha I, I see I didn't write out the fingerings there in that diagram, and I uploaded this diagram to the to the Discord. So if you're not a member of the Discord group, um, just click on that link there that Bruce posted that I pinned up there. You can join the Discord link, and you can get all of the graphics I put up on all of our lessons. Uh, you know, shoot, how far back do we go? I actually stopped. Didn't I? Didn't save all of these. Now I'm saving them all. I think I have unlimited. Maybe not. I don't know how many screens. If I create another one, but all of these diagrams, okay. All of these are all up there. We have the bluegrass stuff that we did. This was cool. The triad thing we did. I don't know what that happened there. Um, we started learning songs. Uh, we talked about musicality. Grooves. I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff and all this stuff. And then we started doing reading music. And this is, this is like a book now we're putting up there. And we're going to continue with this. Don't worry. We're going to continue with this. The cool thing is, like I said, now that you've got a little bit of foundation in reading music, um, we can, and you can go back and watch these videos if you haven't watched them, okay? They're just, I, I don't know, they started about 200 or something like that. Um, but it's in the title. You can find it in the, in, if you go to the, go to my, um, if you go to my, um, uh, YouTube channel and click on live stream videos. Uh, you can just scroll down until you get to the first of the of the uh, sight reading or music reading for beginners. I think is what we called it, right? Um, and we're going to pick that up again. Don't worry, we're not going to. I don't want. I don't want to stop too much on that because I don't want you to kind of forget it. Um, enjoy, enjoy the ride. <laughs> hey, from Montana. Just read an article about wall drugs in South Dakota. I never heard of wall drug store. Never heard about it. It's cute. Looks cute. Hey, Dan's in the house. Are the caged chords separated by equal fret positions? Uh, um, no. Um, what what we will do eventually? Um, <clears throat> we, we will. I will connect them all on a fretboard so you can see how they all connect because. Uh, the root 
of the this C chord here is the same as the root of this C chord. But it's not the same as the root of this C chord. But there's ways to see them visually. So if you look at this, see these three notes there on the A chord, the three notes? Those are the same as the open three on the G chord. Okay? And then this root is the same as this root on the E shape. And then there's really not a whole lot in common between this chord and this chord, but you know, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make these five chords, all right, using just these three fingers. First finger, second finger, third finger. Notice they're all three notes, all three dots, okay, they're all three finger chords. That's these are this is not generally how I would play these chords. Um, but C I would play like that, okay? A I don't generally play it with these three. I play it with these three fingers because it's just too much, too much, too, too little real estate for too many fingers. But for just now, let's just play it with these three fingers for now. Just humor me here. So we got the C chord, play it with these three fingers, and the A chord. And I didn't even write down which strings you play and what strings you don't play. That's not pertinent at this moment. We just want to see the shapes, okay? And then G. You know, normally when I grab a G chord, I still kind of grab this, I call this kind of a, almost like a 90s. I'm sure this chord's been around forever to watch some videos of some players, you know, from the 60s to see if they were 50s and see if they were playing G like this. But I learned it originally like this, or even like this. We're going to get to that one in a second, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> AJ knows, yeah. Yeah, well, it's amazing. That was kind of how it got started. Like, they couldn't get anybody in there, and then they went from zero employees to eight employees when the wife, the wife of the of the guy who started it, she was, she was the one that came up with the idea for the signage. And generally, that's true. <laughs> see the same thing in the South. I forget what it, what, what, what it was in the South that you would see signs for forever. Usually, like, Mammoth Caves or something, so. Cowboy G, exactly. Okay, so we're playing G with these three fingers. Now we're gonna play E with these three fingers. That's normal, completely normal, All right? And E is a good six string chord too. And then D with these three fingers, that's also completely normal. Okay, now we're gonna get, we're gonna go A, B normal, okay? <laughs> Any fans of uh, <laughs> Young Frankenstein? A, B, normal. Here we go. Ready? Yeah, no, Alejandra was here last week. She was awesome. She was uh, very helpful. It was fun. Hey, Den Dunn's in the house, too. And Joey the Ride. I still love that. <laughs> okay. It just makes me think of the TV show episodes, which is freaking hilarious. If you have, what is it on, Netflix? Episodes, if you haven't watched episodes, oh my gosh, it is, it, it is, I, it made me really love uh, Matt LeBlanc. I just, it just, he just was so self-deprecating in that show. It's just freaking amazing. Very, very well-written show. If you haven't seen episodes, watch. <laughs> Wait, and it's also very, being a Hollywood person, you know, work, somebody who works in, in the industry, it's 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 kind of inside baseball, but basically it's these two British writers who come to Hollywood and they just don't fit in. <laughs> so if you if you if you want if you want something to binge, if you're looking for something to binge, that's it. We won't be doing um, the Alex thing. I was we were talking about doing the video where Alex just brings me guitars, just randomly brings me guitars, and uh, we talk about them, but. Uh, he's actually going to be camping for a week, and then he's going to Las Vegas for a week. Um, so, uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao, the boxer, goes to our church, and he's having a fight in a couple weeks. And what he likes to do is he likes to have the, the worship team come out and the pastor come out, and they do worship services the whole week leading up to his fight. And it's pretty amazing because it'll start with like 200 people and it'll be 500 people and it'll be 1,000 people and it'll be 2,000 people. Just keep the crowd grows every day. So so Alex is part of that. So it's pretty fun. Um, okay. So let's see. All right. So what we did just did now with the cage method, we did all five of those chords with just our first three fingers. 
Some are like normal, some are a little weird, like that one for me in the G, okay? But we did it with those three fingers. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate the first finger and we're gonna do it with these three fingers. So this is gonna be much more, much more difficult. This isn't a have to or need to know kind of thing. This is just a method to get you to the step of, of seeing all the shapes up and down the neck, okay? So don't worry, you don't have to be able to do this. Um, just do it now. And it's not something you be, need to be able to do on the fly. It's not a bad thing, okay? So for example, the C chord, instead of playing with your first three fingers, this is really counterintuitive. We're gonna play with these three fingers. Okay, so do that for me. Grab this C chord with the pinky, third finger and second finger on those dot points there, those giant dots. Believe it or not, those are actually really small dots, but I had to make the, I had to make the, uh, to, to be able to draw these in a row, I had to make everything really small. Lolo, what's going on? You have a problem that when I play a chord like G most of the time, two of the fingers hit the same string. Yes, it does sound good when I strum. How can I improve the fingers? Um, well, it depends. You have really fat fingers, because if you have really fat fingers, sometimes that's just because you're... Uh, a lot of it is just keeping your thumb around the back of the neck, okay? Perfect case is this C chord. If you lay, if you if your thumb comes up here too much, you're going to lay your fingers down and they're going to deaden strings. So you kind of want to almost imagine you're you're trying to get your finger to hit the string like like this, almost perfectly 90 degree perpendicular. Um, then once once then once you've got that sound down, you'll find that your thumb's kind of creeping up here. But it'll take a while. You're going to have to have what's called really purist technique. Let's see if I can get that to get this off here. Try to get that. <laughs> But yeah, you can see, uh, what am I trying to do? Here we go. There we go. You can keep my thumb way back there, you know? And what I would do um, a lot of times, and I guess I don't need this anymore <laughs> to remind me to do this lesson, is I would wad up a piece of paper for a student like this and make it a nice tight ball, okay? And then I would try to hold that in your hand while you play a chord. And what that does is that keep, forces you to kind of keep your, the palm of your hand from grabbing the, the neck like a baseball bat. You do not want the palm of your hand there, okay? You want to keep that palm away from the fretboard. And then that will allow you, in the, in the paper, you know, it's very uncomfortable, it's very counterintuitive, but it will allow you to, if you can see that, see, this it's still, <laughs> I make a horrible weatherman, but, or weather lady or whatever. <laughs> make even worse weather lady. <laughs> you don't want to see me in a dress. <laughs> so, so yeah, that what that does is that kind of forces your hand. Now, again, we're we're right now we're talking about doing the C chord with these three fingers. So that's all we're doing right now. Okay. Again, don't worry, you're not going to normally have to do this. However, I've noticed that John Lennon really on an E chord, he'll often play this voicey. And Alex uh, supposed that maybe because originally maybe they were doing like doo wop songs, which I don't know of the Beatles are doing any doo-wop stuff, but when they first got together, they were kind of. You know, that sounds good then. But John just kind of naturally goes that. But yeah, Alejandro, don't worry. This is not this is not the permit, this is not how I'm gonna tell you how to do this chord. This is just for visualization purposes only. So we're gonna we're gonna use this in a second in a different way. It's even gonna be harder. <laughs> So you're going to hate me more. Okay, so now A, remember we did it with these three fingers, and that's not normally how I play A anyway. I normally play it this way. So go ahead and play A with these three fingers. It might actually be easier for you if you got, I don't have fat fingers, but they're just bigger fingers, and guitar is kind of a smallish instrument. Okay. You're welcome, Lolo. Okay, so play that. Now, G, this also, not, not too unusual <coughs> to play this this way. You know, I might play it this way if I'm... Lolo, notice my thumb is up here, right? It's because I don't have a problem getting a good sound out of a G chord. And the thing you want to do, oh, by the way, let me get back to that Lolo's qu question and stuff like that. Uh... I do the A shape with my index or ring finger. Bad habit. Index 
Oh, like this? Or like this? No, but for this for this moment, for this lesson today, do it like this. Just now. It's not, we're, we're, it's, this is not how we're going to play A. I'm not trying to show you a new way to play A, but it's this is a bridge to something that we want to learn. And I'm going to, you know, it's ultimately what this is, is a bridge to something we want to be able to visualize, not necessarily something we need to play. Although it, you could totally play it. Uh, uh, but one of the things, uh, like Lola, one of the things you do too is just pluck the strings one at a time and see if you can get them all ringing out. You know, you might, is what you're talking about kind of stuff happening. So you might have to manipulate the elbow. You also, the elbow, uh, ergonomics, you know, how are you sitting, standing? Uh, I always recommend um, if you're going to be performing and if you're performing standing, like if your performance is sitting down, that's one, then just do that. But if you're going to be standing, let's say you're doing performing, uh, you know, uh, on stage or you're doing worship at a church or you're singing, a, you know, doing a live mic thing or whatever, if you're going to uh, be standing, then I would suggest spending some time standing, practice standing. And you can also adjust the guitar strap. To, to allow the guitar to be at the same height as you practice. So in other words, don't, don't you know, the, the guitar strap straight out of the, the bag, when you buy it, it probably is all the way stretched out. And you're like, no, 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 you, you want to put the strap where you're most comfortable. And you probably want to have it be very similar to the, er, create the ergonomics that you create when you're practicing. But I definitely wear the guitar a little lower um, when I'm standing than when I'm sitting. Uh, but for a while, for a long time, I didn't. For a long time, I wore my guitar very high because I wanted to replicate um, in practice and in performance the similar ergonomics and feel. Uh, because your hand and your elbow and your wrist and all that stuff changes if your hand is way down there like Jimmy Page in the 70s, right? Um, so that's, that's something to... Um, uh, Yeah, and it, it's, is it a bad habit to have it up here? Uh, I, again, if I go to that chord, A flat two chord, um, yeah, look where my thumb is. It's not only behind the neck, it's almost to the bottom of the neck. <laughs> almost, not, almost all the way down here. So that's the only way I get that. If you, and I always, I haven't given you this example in a long time, but if you look at your hand, open your hand up, you can spread your fingers out, right? If you close your hand and make a fist, notice they all, all the fingers want to go to the center of the hand and they run into each other. If they, if you had only one finger in your hand, you did this, whatever finger it was, it would probably generally go to the center of your hand. So if the palm of the, if the neck of the guitar is in the palm of your hand, you really have very little spreadability. But as you get that further away, now you've got much more, much more capability to, to reach difficult chords. I mean, shoot, if I'm going to do this E4 chord, my, my thumb is... There's an adult chord for you. <laughs> Here, let me give you the adult chord. It's called an, I call it E4, which means it's an E triad with a fourth added verse. It's not an E sus. <laughs> and do not sue me later for hurting your hand in doing this, okay? But this is what that is. Okay, A, A4 is a little easier. So it would be X, not in the bottom string, and then 0, 7, let's see, A4 is 7, 6, 3, 0. I love these chords, though. I love the because, and the ironic thing about them, on piano, these chords are super duper easy. <laughs> a baby could play these chords. You sit on a piano and you practically create these chords. But on guitar, these, these chord clusters are really difficult to do. Um, <laughs> hey, Jeff, Pilates canceled so he can stay. Woohoo! <laughs> Delta variant <laughs> win, <laughs> no doubt. Mm. Hey, Holly, Bruce, we got a lot of people watching. You see that? Thank you for 45. That's good. It's because I started a new series. Every time I start a new series, I should do this new series every Monday. <laughs> Just Monday. Every, every, every video is a new series. 
Uh, or I should put intro in the name of everything. Okay, so we've done the C chord with these three fingers. We've done the A chord with these three fingers. We've done, we've done the G chord, right, with these three fingers. Okay, the E chord, this is kind of counterintuitive, but if you play bar chords, this, is, this feels fairly normal. But now play an E chord instead of with your first three fingers. Play it with your second, third, and fourth finger. Okay, so second finger here. I'm pretty chipper for not having any, not a lot of sleep in the last couple of days. So I got shingles. It's like I turn 60 and I get shingles. I'm like, really? Come on. And so, like, it looks like somebody shot me in the back with a shotgun. <laughs> but now it's starting to get on the back end of it. Still, everything hurts. My chest and my back hurt. <laughs> but it itches now. So I've got the pain and the itch. It's like, ah. So I'm not sleeping very good. Okay, so do this E chord. All right. You're going to you're gonna understand why in a little bit. All right. All right. So those are the, so far we've got the C chord with these two. Okay, you can start again with these three fingers, play all the shapes with these three fingers, and then play all the shapes with these three fingers. And again, this is gonna be more for more of a visualization thing. 47 watching, holy cow, thank you so much for watching. I love it. And then here, I've got a, how many, Bruce, how many videos do I have? You guys just go through my videos and find something that you need to learn. It's, it's probably up there. I taught privately for 35 years. And I, 10 years ago, I started doing YouTube videos. So you can see all different iterations of my hair. Um, I started doing end glasses. I started doing YouTube videos because I, I stopped teaching and I wanted to get all that information. My dad had just passed away and everything he knew about jazz and baseball and family history was immediately gone. Somebody, there's an old um, proverb that basically says when a man dies, and it could be a woman too, just man, when a human dies, uh, a library burns to the ground. And that's so true. So what I'm trying to do is empty my library. <laughs> I mean, you can fill libraries with stuff I don't know. But uh, but I'm trying to empty my library onto YouTube so that when I'm gone, uh, people can continue to benefit from it, including the royalties benefiting my kids. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so now we're doing a D chord with these three fingers, okay? I didn't go the antiviral. No, we, the doctor, my, my doctor said there's really nothing he can do. Just just let it run its course. So yeah, it's it's a pain. Uh, ibuprofen helps, but I'm not taking too much of that. I'm only doing it at night because I don't want to have stomach problems. I've never ever had some, I've got a bulletproof stomach, so I probably wouldn't have stomach problems, but I just know that ibuprofen can cause those kind of things. So I'm trying to really go easy on it. Um, so yeah, so it's, it is painful. It's, it's weird pain, too, because I've had nerve damage before. And so it's like one of those pains, you, it's like you don't see anything, and it's, it's like hurts. It's like, it's like sciatica, you know? So. Did you make a video that teaches guitar when you were young and everyone that took lessons from you were older? Yes, yes, I did, I did say that at some point. That was, I definitely had most, so many of my students were had, I think that's the one you probably, the my seven tips for older beginners, I may have said that. Uh-oh. Are we buffering? I hope not. Um, but my seven tips for older beginners, I may have said that, that a lot of my my students were older. That was kind of the point of teaching the lesson. And they all had jobs and careers and businesses or whatever, and they all make it a lot more money than I was, you know. And uh, they uh, they would show up with these amazing guitars. I also taught a lot of rich kids. And they would be beginners, and they'd have like a two thousand dollar Les Paul, and they had they couldn't play a lick on it, you know. I'm like, it'd just be like, oh man. So I was born into the wrong family. <laughs> so, no, I'm not. Okay, so we we play all of these shapes now. D. That's also one that's kind of counterintuitive, right? That D doesn't feel very good that way, but just. Do it, even if you just have to put your fingers on one finger at a time, just to kind of see that. Now, because it's going to get harder. <laughs> You're going to really hate me now. Alejandra is really going to be mad at me now. <laughs> so, so now what we want to do, go back to C and play it with these three fingers, okay? All right, but this is cool, though. Check this out. Because we've done this, we can slide it up a fret, and we've had, we have this finger available. See, we on, on this... This refingering of all five of these chords, we didn't use the index finger. So that's our God-given capo right there. God gave us the capo, and here it is. We don't need we don't need no stinking capo. God gave us one. Now, I'm a big fan of capos. Okay, I did. I remember teaching clinics, and 
I would have guys in the front row with their arms crossed going, you're lazy if you use a capo. And I'm like, no, you want good sound if you want to keep you using a capo. I would, I would basically dispel it. I, and I, then I had to start teaching like 18 reasons to capo and then they would shut up. So, okay. I'm, so I'm a big fan of capoing, but this is cool. So if I take this chord, I move it up a fret and bar, in this case, just the top three strings, very difficult. All right. Again, this is not something I'm requiring. This is not required for cage method. Don't think that. This is just a, a, a stepping stone to visualizing it because that's what the cage method is. It's a way to visualize your fretboard for both lead plane and rhythm plane. Okay, which are the only two types of playing you really do. Um, if you're doing solo guitar stuff, technically. Your, that's my next song that I'm going to upload. I haven't recorded it yet, though. Uh, but my Gypsy Jazz one's up, up, not up yet, so I'll let you know. <laughs> Alejandro's like, he's talking about me. The man on TV is talking about me. <laughs> and she, Alejandro, is in, you're in, like, Brazil. I forget, you're in South America somewhere. I'm not judging you by your name. I'm, I, I, re I vaguely remember you telling me Friday where you were. I want to say Argentina. Let's see if I'm right. So, but the cool thing about this is, guess what? Now you know 12 chords. This is movable. So this is C. This is C sharp or D flat. Both are the same. Uh, is it a hindrance? It's a, um, no, it's definitely, it will help you find the scales. So, and we, and we will talk about that if we continue on this cage methods thing. Each one of these cage, each one of these shapes has major scales associated with it, minor scales associated with it, or relative minor scales associated with it, um, pentatonic scales, blues scales, that you can use these shapes to find those. So it's actually, um, and scale practice is a good thing, but really melodic practice is a better thing. So once you have a scale down, what I would do is I would put on some kind of jam or just a chord. It could be just a pad or something um, and practice finding melodies. Because really, that's the only reason to learn a scale is to create a melody. Um, when you're writing music, you're creating melodies. But also when you're improvising, you're creating melodies. Nobody wants to listen to someone improvising that's going... <laughs> Even, even guys that can, can do that and make it pseudo-melodic kind of bore me after a while. I really don't want to listen to that. Um, but someone who can take... You know, they can take that scale and turn it into some kind of melodic concept. And again, the cool thing about improvisation is, and this is this shape, this method helps you get to that place. Cool thing about improvisation is that you're spontaneously creating melodies. The best improvisers are the ones that are able to ultimately, I think, create something beautiful uh, with unlimited tools at their disposal. So on the fly, which is crazy, because I can come up with a pretty cool melody if I sit down and work on it for a day. Um, well, not a day. I don't need a day to come up. You get the idea. Okay, so. Uh, Chile, dang it, dang it, I knew that. We even talked about, yeah, my friend from Chile, Mauricio Guerrero, Guerrero. And he made, he made, married his wife, Leila, and this, when, when, so this, I, let me know if this is a South American thing, but it's funny, because uh, Leila's from Peru, and Mauricio is from Chile, and, and they got married, and um, her mom said, oh, he's got three R's in his last name. That's a good sign. Like, he's wealthy or something. <laughs> so she's, she was under the impression that the more R's you had in your last name, the wealthier you were. That was like a thing. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, or that may be a Peruvian thing. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> that was one of the things her mom said about Mauricio. So, Okay. Carrero. All right. So if we take that difficult to finger C chord and make it even more difficult to finger C sharp chord, 
We can keep moving that up and every one of these is a different chord. So you're learning 12 chords with one shape. That's the beauty of guitar. See on piano, you'd have to learn all the different black key, white key combinations to create a bunch of major triads. But on guitar you don't. Now this is probably, the of all of these, is the, probably the second hardest one. So again, this is just, we're gonna use this to visualize the neck, okay? We're not gonna play this all like I said, John Lennon love this E chord, okay? So if I go C and I go here, that's C sharp or D flat, that's the same thing. Here's D, well, you, you, if you look at it, you go, wait, that is D. Sometimes you might play D with your pinky, with your first finger barred like that, right? So you can kind of see, oh wait, I do see that that's, that is a D chord, okay. This is D sharp, more commonly called E flat, okay? 57 watching, holy cow, that's gotta be a new record. Okay, and then here we have E. Okay, this is E, so I went C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And it would behoove you to learn this. <laughs> I love that word. I always think of a, <laughs> I always think of a stupid SNL skit where they said, it'll behoove you to take care of your uvula. <laughs> it was like a, a pro uvula ad, <laughs> which is that thing that looks like a boxing bag in the back of your throat. <laughs> Okay, so, a punchy bag. Okay, so, um, if we keep going, that's F, F sharp, G, okay? And this is one of the things, now, how do I know? Well, one thing, there's, in this shape, there are two Cs, there are two roots in this. I've got the third fret on the fifth string, that's a C, and there's a C. So whatever note this is, either one of those are, if you know either one of those. And generally, when you're learning guitar, um, and you, particularly when you're learning rock, you know, it's like, you tend to learn the notes on the bottom string, and you tend to learn the notes on the second from the bottom string, the, the A string or the fifth string, because those will allow you to uh, uh, <clears throat> those will allow you to play power chords and know which power chord you're playing. Okay. Um, so that those tend to be so if you do know the bottom two strings, then you should be able to find every version of this. And if you know, oh, that's a D, then this is a D major chord. If this is E flat, here's G. And to be honest, I like the sound of this chord. And I, I will often play this chord with the open E string. Like the D there, or maybe even the E. Sounds good with the F, the F chord. Get that major seventh on top, or it becomes a sixth when you play the G. back down to the original C. Okay, again, this is all really for theoretical purposes. I don't need you to necessarily have the mad guitar chops to be able to play this shape up and down the neck, but I just showed you how you can use it, so not, if, not, not a bad thing to know how to do. Okay, now we go to the A chord, and we played it like this initially, and then we played it with these three fingers, and then, so what that allows us to do, again, it allows us to take our God-given capo, Go up a fret, bar at the first, and we got this horrid, horrid, horrid B flat chord. And I'm actually, I'm actually touching the bottom string with my tip of my first finger to deaden it. Okay, but I'm, I'm just strumming the top five strings. Okay, that's a very difficult chord. I did a video on the son of a B chord, which is this, the next fret up. Okay, but again, if you, you can see the power chord, there. you see that. So if you know your power chords, you'll know what chords these are. So this is B power chord. This is C harp, and this is C. And you're like, why would I ever play that C when I play this C? Well, again, we're visualizing the fretboard. This is gonna un this is gonna unlock shapes, uh, uh, scale shapes, scales, um, uh, unlock uh, harmonies, chord stuff. I'm making more promises than the Cage Method could deliver right now. <laughs> but Tom said it'll solve my dyslexia. <laughs> I'm like, no, not gonna <laughs> go quote that. Okay, so so again, we take this horrid shape, we move it up. Now, it gets a little easier as you get up here because the frets get smaller. And that gap between the first finger and all the other fingers gets a little closer, so it's a little bit easier. But then for me, it's a little tougher because now I got even less real estate to put these fingers on. So, but you can, if you want, you can start to, you can play these and just kind of see, okay, there's C, there's D, there's E, there's F, there's G. You know, but when you learn this one shape, now the great thing is you've learned 12 different chords. That's, again, one of the amazing things about guitar. Um, 
Hey. You catch up on the review. Don't worry. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a quick, quick summary of what we did. We played these five chords with our first three fingers. Then we played them with our second, third, and fourth finger. Whoops. C, C, A, G, E, and D. Now we're now we're doing the same thing, but now we're putting the bar behind it. Okay. This one is the hardest. Okay. Play the G shape with these three fingers. Okay. So we've got our our God given capo right here. AKA first finger. Um, we slide it up a fret and we bar the hook. This is not easy. Okay, look, I'm even having trouble with it. Okay? LOL, Lolo. I mean, listen. Again, it's for visualization purposes. If you can see this, like there, if I go up there, there's A. Well, look. I, the A major pentatonic, or F sharp minor pentatonic is right there. So by visualizing or playing this shape right here, this G shape moved up two frets with the first finger on the second fret, okay? So I'm five, four, two, 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 five. I'm literally playing 50% of a pentatonic scale. 50% of those notes are represented by this triad. That's hard to play. So I'm admitting that. It's not, okay. Now, will I use this? I I will, very rarely do I use that, the full of it, but I might use this. Again, because remember, rhythm playing is, could be, it doesn't necessarily mean, mean chopping out. It could be. And, and, and so what I'm doing, with, the, with just right there, I was visualizing the E form, then I was visualizing the A form, and then I was visualizing the A form, but I was keeping the top note the same of the, you know. So it, again, those were diff different chord forms, a one, four, five progression in the key of G, that I was using cage method to kind of come up with my shapes. And so I was only using maybe the top three notes of these shapes, okay? But like, for example, this, play this with me. See if you can do this. If you can do this, you'll, ha you'll dig this, okay? So there's our little, oh, that's the top, three strings of the G shape moved up to A, okay? So I'm barring two, two, and then five. Yeah, don't worry about it. Alejandra, don't worry about doing that G shape. Just just maybe visualize it, okay? You, I, I can't do it. So if I can't do it, you can't do it. Um, I mean, I can get a pretty decent sound the further up I get, but that first one's almost impossible. But again, this is about visualizing all the notes that are there, boom, like that, boom, I'm right away. I, I immediately can see major scales, pentatonic scales. I can even see minor, minor pentatonics that I associate with this shape, okay? It helps you learn the fretboard. It helps you find um, all the shapes up and down the neck. That's the, that's the reason, okay. But check it, we'll go back to this, this little shape, okay? So we have two, two, five, okay? Hit it and let it kill it, like short. Hey, Salvador, good to see you. Salvador Marley, that's a, like the coolest name ever. Literally the coolest name ever. Okay, sorry, Aslan. <laughs> okay, now that's, if you pick it short, then we go, then we're gonna make, this is easier. We're gonna go four, three, and five. So we went four, three, five. So the top note's not gonna change. So just know that we're gonna keep playing this five here. Okay. And then we go here. So we got four, uh, five, four, five. And then we're gonna finish with this. Six, five. So listen, this. this is, um, of course now, Count Basie. This is his famous Count Basie ending to a song. You get the open A string, you can hit this A string. Okay, isn't that cool? And so I, I see that because I, I start it because it's from this shape. And basically what's happening is here we've got the, these two notes. So we've got two, two, and then we have 
little harmonized chromatic scale, basically, we have is what's going on, but we have a harmony. Kind of, we talked about this last uh, last week with uh, with the sight reading, with our re music reading, kind of the Cruella de Vil, Blue Monk kind of thing. Okay. But that's a cool little, little trick using this G shape. Okay. Now, again, so the same thing happens that we learned 12, we've learned technically 12 different chords. Um, you could just see these three notes in it, or you might just see the top two notes, or you might see the bottom. You know, I use those a lot. Okay, so the G like that, I might just see, you know. So what I'm doing is technically I'm visualizing this B flat, but I'm only playing the bottom two notes. So I don't need to have my hand on it. Okay, I can just do it. a nice pop rhythm guitar track. <laughs> You're gonna watch this video a million times? Thank you. <laughs> that's that's my whole goal is to give you something that's just slightly out of your reach so you have to keep watching it till you get right. Okay, so we did the E chord with our first three fingers, then we did it with our second three fingers. And for those of you who play played bar chords all your life, you know this one, right? This one's the, probably the easiest one of all of them. Uh, and, it, you know, it's the, kind of the first bar chord you learn, you know, that, dar that darn F chord. I did that video, the darn, that darn F chord. Um, F chord is a four-letter word. Uh, but the uh, um, basically, again, we've got this thing where we're using our God-given capo, aka index finger, and we've created a shape that we can replicate at every fret, creating 12 different chords. So I love when you can multiply your knowledge, and this multiplies your knowledge. The, the thing is, you're going to have to know what note this is. Whatever note this is, that's what chord it is. So if this is F, this is an F major chord. If this is G, this is a G major chord. This is B flat, C, right there. Okay. How many do we have Holly watching right now? 47, not bad. We got up to 57. That's crazy. But whenever I start a new series, it always seems to it seems to do really well. So, <laughs> yeah, you got to love the God-given game. Um, I had a student actually didn't have an index finger. Fortunately, he wanted to learn banjo. Lost it in a farming accident, literally. <laughs> and, but he wanted to play banjo, so it worked out. We, we no, well, you never got good, but <laughs> you could definitely you could play chords. So banjo's a little bit easier because you hit all all five strings open, you got a G chord. So you know it's it's he can bar with his second. So he got to that point. But uh, okay, so the E shape again. You know I can go I can go to here A and I can if I'm at the fifth fret I can see this major major pentatonic. I can see the minor pentatonic. See the blues. I can see the major scale. Uh, okay, so there's definitely it, it's it's a a way to help you find. Oh, the, oh, that's right. That's where the scale is. You know, kind of thing. So uh, that's again why, why the cage method of visualizing your fretboard is a good way to. Um, help your rhythm playing and a good way to help your your um, lead playing, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, the last one, D chord, not a very fun one to play, okay? Again, it, and here's one too that is like, how many how many strings are we actually visualizing? You know, how many how many notes do we have? Well, Technically, you could play a D chord like this, right? 
So I'm playing two, two with my thumb and an open, open, second, third, and second. I talk about frets here. Two, so two, zero, zero, two, three, two. Fingering wise, it's thumb. You can, like, you could do it this way with your first finger and then play like this. Not very, very kind of difficult. This is not easy either. So, but but visualizing that notes there is not a bad thing necessarily because as we go up the fretboard, see again once we get our our index finger, you know there's no real way to play it. But like if I keep moving this up, if I take this, here's D, here's E flat or D sharp. Go up another fret. Notice I've got to keep a fret between my first finger and my second finger here. Okay, if you let that shorten up, that's not D. Oh, that's not a D shape, that's a D shape. So this is a D shape, but it's an E chord. Okay, so whatever note this is, that's what chord it is. If I go up a fret, that's that's an F. This is an F chord, but it looks like a D shape, if I just look at this part of it, okay? Boy, I'll tell you, this shape comes in super duper handy, though, on rhythm playing. Okay, there's F sharp, there's G. For, so for example, if I'm in a key of G, I need a rhythm part. I might go up here. Right? And if it goes to C chord, I can go, I can create like a D, like a D sus kind of thing. Go C, G sus. I still got a D here, so it's not a pure C chord, but it kind of creates a C2 kind of sound. Back to G. Nice little rhythm part, or it might be considered a lead line too, if it was on top in the record or whatever. Hear that on top? An example of how you might use the Cajun method um, to uh, come up with a rhythm part. You could also go, uh, you know, I might I might do something like this where I go, you know, um, I want a little reggae. Salvador uh, Marley might want this for his record. Hey, Rodney, I might. Go. If it were reggae, I probably would. I would go with more pure triads, major minor triads. One and two and three and four. Okay, and this, that one right there. Okay, that's a C chord. It's. I'm visualizing this shape, the E form, all the way up here at C. So this one, I'm visualizing. Actually, you can visualize either the. Um, and that's where you start to see the commonality and the connectivity of these shapes. I'm, you can visualize either the D shape or the C shape. They both are this. In fact, I might visualize more of the C shape. Uh, and this is a G chord, but it looks like a C chord, right? But I keep moving it up. Boom. There's C flat F. There's G. But I'm just need, I just need top two or three notes. And I go to the C. Okay? So that's, again, how, how you kind of um, will... That's one small, teeny tiny example of how you can use the cage method to come up with a rhythm guitar part. Um, and, you know, the best compliment, one of the best compliments I ever got was someone, um, someone said to me that I don't teach how to play music, I teach how to make music, which is actually really interesting because I do tend to, I do tend to want to decipher things and then take them apart and then re-explain them. I just like doing that. And you know, we homeschooled and we had three kids and they all learned totally differently, right? Um, and boys tend to learn differently than girls, not always, but like boys love to take things apart and put it back together again. And so that, you know, but there's like five, to, thank you, Jeff. There are five different ways or six, I think, I can't remember. Uh, we've got, I think, Catherine, I, I can't remember if you're in education. I know you're a university professor, but I forget your, your major. But there's like five or six different ways of learning. So oftentimes what I find myself doing, not even intentionally, but in order to connect to as many people as possible, especially in the live stream 
scenario, I tend to re-explain things, and I apologize if I'm, I'm like you feel like, oh, Tom, you just. Uh, I try to re-explain things though, coming from different directions and different teaching teaching uh, metho methodologies or uh, what, what, what do we call it, uh, pedagogies, different pedagogies. Uh, Promo, what's going on? Good to see you. <laughs> Guitar in hand, ready to go. Okay, so. Um, I'm just kind of doing an intro to the cage method, um, and then what we're going to do is I think we're, we're going to take apart each of the chords. What I might do is show you some licks, uh, show you some scales, things like that. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I don't want to stray too far away from the reading we've been doing. So we've been learning how to read music, which I know is not a very popular thing for guitar players, but pretty much every other musician on the planet learns how to read music. And so if you want to have any kind of musical communication with another musician that's not a guitar player or a drummer. <laughs> Count Basie said, I have 17 musicians and a drummer. Maybe, I forget, was that Duke Ellie? I don't know, that doesn't sound like something Duke Ellie. That sounds like something that Count Basie would probably say. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you teach all day, every day. Uh, do you teach on education? Are you, are you working with future teach? No, I forget what your, your s subject uh, specialty is but anyway um, but yeah it's teaching is one of those things where you know some people are really good at memorizing that was not my thing like a lot of the girls you know when I was in high school junior high they could memorize anything and like bet my wife can you know it's pretty good at that and uh, Beth loves to read and I'm like oh reading of course I told you you know I learned to read sight read uh, when, uh, I went to a very progressive Washington DC high uh, grade school and they were all the latest teaching methods that were have long since been given up on and were taught to us. So I learned everything wrong. <laughs> but they were trying to do the read, you know, like you just memorize words and read them fast, speed reading, that kind of stuff. And it's like, it means I read like this. People who learn phonics read through sentences. So I get tired after one paragraph of reading stuff like that. But the thing is, when I read music, I read through phrases. So I read music the correct way, read phrases and just kind of let it all connect. Um, and so, um, so I try to teach, like, try to teach it different, uh, the same thing different ways so that it will connect with everybody. And a lot of times, you know, having it taught three or four different ways to approach the same idea will, uh, just make it deeper for you. So you may have gotten it the first time, but then the other three times you're like, oh, wait, you're right. Oh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Okay. And that's kind of what I'm doing. So what we're doing with these shapes is that we're, we're trying to see them. I don't even need you to memorize any of these shapes. I don't need you to memorize, I need you to memorize these five shapes, which you already know. That's the beauty of this. If you've been playing guitar for longer than six months, you know all five of these chords. So that you already know. Um, I don't need you to memorize that this is an A flat chord or that this is an A flat chord. Okay, that we're not there yet. Okay, that will happen in due time. And it's more likely to happen as you learn a song and as you learn like a song that you want to solo over or that you want to come up with an alternative rhythm part for. If you've got two guitar players and one of them's banging out C, you can do a thing where you double them and double that other rhythm guitar player and it's like two guitars, which is often in the studio, I'll do that. If I play that on a song, I will often, in fact, my jam tracks, my bluegrass jam tracks of this, I basically double the same guitar part. I actually intentionally don't double it, but but sometimes I'll do it as close as I can to exact doubles, which means play a rhythm part, and then, then they move it over to your left ear, and then on your right ear is your new guitar part. You try to line them up and match them as best you can. It's If it's perfect, it'll sound like it's in the middle, but if it's right done right, it'll sound like two guitars, but it'll sound like a, a guitar spread stereo. Um, and so that's fine. That's one way to play, come up with a good rhythm part. However, if you want to come up with something that's different than the other guitar player are doing, then you can utilize the cage method to find different ways to play a G, C, and D chord up the neck. So, you know, you can...
all of these little miniature rhythm guitar ideas all work over. Matt, yeah. And see, math was one of my favorite subjects. I did well in math. Scored perfect on my SAT math portion. And, and that's what kind of got me into college. But boy, the English one was like, <laughs> English? I don't speak English. Uh, now, if I were to take the SAT today, it would be the other way around, which is ironic. I would do really well in English, and I would fail in all the math. because <laughs> what, what movie is it? Oh, it's... Uh, it's actually a pretty funny movie. I haven't seen that movie in forever. I love time travel movies. Uh, Peggy Sue Got Married, uh, where she goes, I'm never going to need this. <laughs> she tells the teacher, it's like they're learning algebra or something like that. And she knows because she's really 20 or 30 years older than she, she is in the, in the movie. And she's like, I'm, I know for a fact that I'm not going to need to know this. So that's kind of what happened. Hey, John McDonough. Um, uh, you know, a lot of that math stuff that I had just, the trigonometry and the calculus that I had just learned was on the, on the SAT, so I lucked out. Um, it was all fresh in my head. But um, today, I, you know, I couldn't do trig to save my life. My son, Jack, uses it every day, so. Oh, Rodney, I'm using a man-made guitar with oil can. Oil tin, can you guys help me? I have two nice guitars. I don't know what that means. Help you buy one? You probably, probably will be the best guitar you ever had is the tin can one. Because it'll be your first guitar. So. Okay, it's all, all good, Bob. Um. So again, we, if we take this D shape and we start to move it up the fretboard, we find all these different shape chords. Again, same thing with all the other ones. It's technically 12 different. I don't know, Sam. I think it was Peggy Sue got married because I'm pretty sure I remember it was her that said, I know for a fact I'm not. I love Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies. I love time travel movies. But because I love it's it's. It, all time travel movies are fish out of water stories, which I love fish out of water stories. You know, it's funny because we all feel like fish out of water in some ways. We all feel like we don't fit in. Um, but yeah, so all of these shapes now, again, Alejandra, don't worry about it. You don't need to be able to play this, but you can, if you can just visualize it, and again, you can just take that D shape and move it up and down if you want. The, the root note is here. So if you want, you can use this as a tool to help you learn your second string notes, okay? So if that's D, up uh, E is a whole step away. Then up a fret, F. Up two frets is G. Up two frets is A. Up two frets is, okay? Now, somebody asked me once, uh, is there a cage method for minor chords? Not really, because uh, there are not there are not five open minor chords that uh, we have E minor, A minor, G minor, um, but G minor you really can't do because you got to. Oops, sorry. It doesn't really work. You know, if I maybe play G like this, you could maybe. But the problem is this is now a four finger chord. So we can't play it in a manner where we could bar it and visualize it up the neck. So only the A, the E, and the D could be played minor. The C is the same problem. We have two, we have two thirds in here. So the difference between a major chord and a minor chord is that the third is lowered from a major. So C, like if you look at C here, there's E. See, I only have one E in that shape. So if I flatten that E down a fret, I get E minor, or uh, sorry, C minor. Okay. Uh, so C minor would be C E flat G instead of C E G. Does that make sense? Um, so All right, let's see where are we at here? Uh, 
All right. So what I want to do in um, the upcoming live stream with regards to the cage method um, is, um, is to connect shapes, okay, uh, scales and pentatonic scales and diatonic scales with these shapes. However, more important than that at this moment is to connect the shapes to each other. This is the order of the shapes. So, so no matter where you start, okay, what chord is the one chord, is your chord, is your root chord, um, they will still go in this order, okay? I'm gonna show you this, all right? So you can play these with me if you can. Okay, so we did C, here's C, all right? The next C chord is an A shape, and it's played here at the third fret, okay? So play that. Start on the fifth string, three, five, 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 and three, if you can get that. Kind of tough. Okay. And then, thanks, Dennis. Um, and then the next shape is G. Well, see these three notes here? Those are the same as these three notes here in the G. So that's how they're connected. So if you want to, you can practice visualizing the a form and the G form and kind of playing them next to each other. So if I was playing, say, an F chord here using the A form, then this would be the F here. And you can see, again, don't need to necessarily be able to play these. Uh, the A form, yeah, you probably should learn to play this because it's a great way to play a major triad. Um, the G, G shape, not so much. Don't worry about that one. I, I, I hardly ever use that. Like I said, I only I use the... <laughs> the uh, Count Basie uh, lick, you know, I'll, I'll visualize that G shape for that. So if I'm in B flat. Okay. Um, and that's earlier in the video. So if you want to learn that lick, I showed it earlier in the video. Okay. Um, <laughs> but we did, uh, so here's C, here's C, here's C. See, they're all C chords, they're different shapes. C shape, A shape, G shape, C, A, G. Guess which shape is next? E, right? There's our E shape. It's a C chord, and then the next. So this is at the at the I'm at the um, eighth fret bar in my first finger. Eight, ten, ten, nine, ten, eight, eight. Okay, and then the last one is the is is looks like a little D chord, and there it is. I'm starting on the fourth string. I'm at ten and twelve, thirteen, twelve. Again, you, you might have a hard time playing this, but that's okay. All right, now. The order stays the same, okay? It may not spell out caged. It may spell out aged C, <laughs> okay? It may spell out ged ka. <laughs> it may spell out ed cag. <laughs> and it may spell out DC age, okay? But it will always be in the, the letters will always be in that shape. So let's do, let's, let's, let me, let me model this, okay? Play the A chord. Okay, we're, we can play it either way. We're just talking about A chord, okay? The next A chord is the G shape, right? After after A is G in the word cage. What's after G? E. So the next A chord is the E shape. You see that? We got the E shape here. Sorry, I think I can, this is probably better for the angle. Okay, after E is D. Well, lo and behold, look at that. There's our next A chord. Um, and after um, the, the D shape is C, and there's, and again, it's not easy to play, kind of cramped up here, but just you can visualize it, okay? You see the little C chord there? You can even play a normal C chord and not worry about the open strings, but that's an A chord. If I just play those three strings. Notice I'm using my fingers, so I'm not, because I don't want to. I like the sound of that. It's a, a, a A7 chord. There. Okay, so that was A chord, A chord, A chord, A chord, A chord, A shape, G shape, E shape, D shape, C shape. If I want, if I'm on electric, I could do another A shape, go full the full octave. Okay, all right. So so we just saw five different ways you can play an A chord using the five different shapes. Okay. 
You can play Lucille with those five notes. Yes. Possibly. I don't know. But, um, okay, so then we got the G chord, okay? Yes, Alejandro, just, the, the main thing is just to start to visualize them. You don't need to, like, be able to nail them. It's not like you have to master this, but just start to see the shapes. See how they're connected. This is where I'm going right now. So, again, the G shape, the G chord, we're in G. Boom. Okay. I need another G chord. What's another G chord? Well, what's the next shape after G? It's going to be the E shape. So, where is that? Well, it's right here. Okay. Now, how do I find that? I, the, one of the things is, and... and, and what I can do and I didn't do is I can write out these with the bar um, in there, okay? And I, that would maybe where we go next time, either next week or the next time I talk about this. Um, and then I will highlight maybe with a red dot instead of a black dot, the roots. And so if you, as long as that note is lined up with the proper note, that's what chord it will be. So for example, the root on the, there's three roots in this open G chord. There's this, this note and this note, and then there's the open G string. So we have three possible roots. Well, we got, one of the first things we learn is, about, is, is all the notes on the bottom string. So if you start there, that's really helpful, okay? Um, so we got, then we have the G form. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, the G chord a, a E form, and then after the E form, right? After the E form is the D form. So where is that? Okay, here it is. There's a G note, so here's our D form. And then after D is C, so we're spelling out ged ka. <laughs> so we got the D, now we need the ka, the C of the ka. There you go. Which is a, a bad word in Spanish, sorry, <laughs> Alejandra. <laughs> Um, so uh, the the bar no not necessarily because like here's an example the bar is here and yet um, so promo is asking to, uh, does the does the bar start on the position of the root note um, if I think if I understand your question uh, but look our root note now is on the pinky this is the C form but this is also a G chord. G, there's our G right there. And we're, let me, let me, uh, we'll, we'll, again, I should have, I should have made some notation there as to which no, these notes are the roots. But really, all I want you to do is to see the five basic shapes that you generally already know and see how they work up the neck. Okay, okay, and then the, now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, after after the C shape was the A shape, so that's going to be our next G chord. And here it is. So we have G, 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 G. And if we want, we could go to G here. It's really hard. Um, or you can think of it as uh, G shape G chord, E shape G chord, D shape G chord, C shape G chord, or an A shape G chord. Okay. I'm, again, I'm trying to teach this at, coming at different directions, Catherine. Oh, hey, Catherine. Kathleen. Well, and that's what we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about that next. Okay, I'm just showing you right now how they're kind of kind of interconnected and how they relate to each other. All right, let me take another sip. Here, I can touch my face. That's one of our drinking game rules. If I touch my face, we all uh, take a sip. So hopefully you have some libation handy. Okay, now uh, we're on E. So if I play E chord. There's E. The next E, sh the next shape is D. Okay, and that's there. All right. All right. The next after the uh, D shape is what C. Okay, so here's C. It's the same every time. It's always in this order. And after the C shape is the A shape. Well, here's the here's the A uh, E form for the A shape. Okay, so again, uh, Kathleen, I'm just showing you, I'm just showing you, like I'm giving away, I'm giving you the answers in advance. Okay, we're gonna now we're gonna we're gonna find out one of the ways that we can figure out the answers. 
<laughs> Everybody's got the cheers. Cheers, promo. And then there's, here's a G shape. This horrible G shape up here with a bar. Okay, that's E. All right? And if we want, we can do the E chord there and go full circle. Again, full circle. You can kind of think of it like we, when we learned about, remember I showed you the five pentatonic scales? How I, I would like to think of it as a chain that just keeps going around. It's five links of a chain. These are five different links, and they're just looped. Just keep going around and around and around. All right? So it, what I'm showing you here is that we did C, and the next C was the A, the next C was the G, and the next C was the E, and the next C was the D form. All these different forms of the same chord, ultimately. Okay? Then we start on A, and the chain link... The chain link still looped around. We went A to G to E to D, and then we, sure enough, we had C, okay? So it, it went to C. It doesn't matter where you start in the word cage, it's still going to loop around on itself. Keep going, okay? We just did G, we did just the, we did E, right? Last one is D. Here's D, the D form D chord. Oh, that's redundant. And then we have, there's the C after D is C, right? And then after C is A. And after A is G shape, and after the G shape is the E shape, and after E shape. Okay. Okay, so now, uh, to Kathleen's point, it was the thing I was just mentioning I was going to get to next. Basically is um, four of the five chords here, okay, you can find the root on either the bottom string or the, the, a, the low E string or the low A string, the A string, okay, the bottom string or the second from the bottom string. Okay, so in other words, here's the E string, here's the bottom string, here's the second from the bottom string. Boy, was that a circuitous way of saying that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, uh, do, do, do. <laughs> I know I'm an idiot, and I apologize in advance for all the new people watching Salvador, Telecasters, and SGs. Yeah, oh, do you see my, my SG's not up there, is it? No, my SG's in my gig bag. Yeah, the, 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 uh, you see the, 54 reissue there, the butterscotch one. That's a telly. And then the other telly is actually a baritone telly. So you can tell it's longer because look, it's hanging lower. That's a baritone. See, it's got a humbucker in it. I need it for heavy metal stuff. So. Hey, we're going to get ready to take another drink because I do all the guitars on Apex Legends, the game Apex Legends. I do a lot of video games, and that's probably the best known game. That They have 100 million players on that game. It's insane. Uh... Oh, no, you lost power. What? So you have no... How do you have internet? Oh, maybe you're... Because you're using your phone. So maybe you're, you're, uh, the cell tower didn't lose power, just your house. Yes. So subscribe, all that stuff. Okay, we're, st we're starting to come off our highs, but we're still pretty high. <laughs> All right, we're still pretty high for us. Normally we're in the 20s. We got into the 50s. Can't believe it. What? Again, it always happens when I start a new subject. All right. So, um, so what we want to do then is we want to memorize the notes um, on the um, uh, on the uh, the bottom two strings. And if you memorize the notes on the bottom two strings, then you can find four of the five shapes at any one time, okay? Um, the C shape, that third th that third fret note, that note on the fifth string, that's your root. So if whatever note that is, that shape will be that chord, okay? Um, the A shape, it's the fifth string, open in that case. Whatever note, when you're playing the A shape, whatever note is on that fifth string, that is the that is the chord that you're playing. That's the shape you're playing. That's the actual chord. Um, same thing with the G. The G chord, you notice the bottom note on the bottom string there, you would play, in this case, with it, maybe a third finger or second finger. That is the root of the G chord, okay? There's multiple roots in, in, in all of these. They all have at least two roots in them, but the lowest one is often the easiest one to find. So the, the, that that bottom note there on the bottom string, that's your root. So whatever note that is, and when you play a G chord, that note's a G, and that, therefore it's a G major chord, okay? Um, and then the E, the open E string, is your root. So when you make those E bar chords, and this is, again, one of the most common ones we, we work on power chord-wise and bar chord-wise, whatever note is on that first finger as you move up and down, 
that's the root. And so it becomes, a, at the first fret, it becomes an F chord, third fret becomes G, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. And then the only one, the only outlier is the D one, and so that me means it would be helpful if you could learn the D string as well. Ultimately, you should know all the notes on the fretboard, but start on a bottom string, because if you learn the low E string, you all, then by, by proxy, um, you know the top string. So technically, if you learn the bottom string, you also know the top string, which means now you're one-third done with all the strings, okay? So when I teach this, when I teach learning the fretboard, um, I basically use um, four rules, okay? Um, and it's four very, very small little rules. Let me, let me um, see if I can do a text. Okay. So it's going to be a weird text until I edit it. First rule. <laughs> uh, half step. I see. Uh, it, so if you're doing a C scale, C, D, E, F, half step between E, F. Let's see. Okay, no, actually, I'm going to redo this. E, F, and B, C are half steps. Don't worry, I'll make this smaller. Second rule. All others are whole steps. Why am I capitalizing half step? Okay, now I gotta capitalize whole steps. <laughs> okay. Uh, the third rule is flats lower on the fret. And this one rule, sharps. Raise one fret. And you may all know all of this. Okay. All right. So we talk about the musical alphabet. Um, I, you know, I could have written that BC and EF instead of B. But I always say uh, back in the day when I was first teaching, it was BC as in before Christ and EF as in EF Hutton. And nobody knows EF Hutton anymore. Uh, but uh, so EF and BC are half steps, which means they're one fret. OK, uh, whole steps are two frets on the guitar. All right. So let's see. Where can I put this where it won't be in my way Maybe up here? And it, four rules sounds like a lot of rules, but it's really not. These are kind of complementary rules. So it's really almost like two rules. Um, so as you go up the neck, you should know the names of the strings. Eat at Denny's, get bad eggs. Everybody has their own mnemonic for that. And now they're all going to add. Everybody's going to insert their favorite eat at Denny's, get bad eggs mnemonic device. But uh, <clears throat> so... Um, but anyway, we're just going to be on the E string and the A string, okay? And what we want to do is we want to memorize, or we want to, we want to learn them and then memorize the notes on the bottom two strings. And that will get us four-fifths of the way through being able to find these shapes anywhere on the fretboard, okay? Yeah, you're listening. E, F, F, and yeah, exactly. Uh, so we have, this is E, E string, right? What's after E in the musical alphabet? Okay, we know there's no H. Well, there is in German notation, but we're, <laughs> that's a squirrel. And I've talked about this before, and it freaked me out. The only one time I ever did a session that, that I had an H chord, and I'm like, what the hell's an H chord? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, but we're not going to deal with we, we Our musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that's it. We stop at G, and it loops around again, okay? So... Uh, Eddie eight dynamite goodbye Eddie yeah that's a good one <laughs> Jacob nice at at Abdi Banana let's see that's Dutch I'm assuming and I don't know what it means oh a monkey that does not eat <laughs> bananas thank you Jacob <laughs> and I'm, I've actually tuned my guitar a monkey that does not eat bananas and it's a very difficult tuning because trying to find that e, that M note and that T note 
And the end note is very difficult. <laughs>, Laughs in German. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> man, those are great. Uh, we should got we got I gotta put a, do a post of those. It would be fun. We we can talk about those. Um, I could do I could do a whole video on eat at Denny's get bad eggs, and I feel bad doing it because I'm, I'm not opposed to Denny's. I'm not a fan of Denny's, but anyway. So we have E. So after E in the musical alphabet is F. Okay, is E to F one of our half steps, or is that a whole step? Oh, it's one of our half steps, so we go up one fret. So that's F. Okay, the next after F is G. Is it? Is that a? Is that a whole step or a half step? Um, well, it's not one of our half steps, so it must be a whole step. So we go up two frets, and there's G. Okay, G A. G A. Is that one of our whole steps or half steps? Well, it's not one of our half steps, so it's got to be a whole step. So again, two frets to go to A. Okay, good. A, B. Okay, B, C is a half step, but must A, B must be a whole step. Okay, so we're going to go up two frets again. Okay, at B, C. We're at B. Next note is C. Where is that? Oh, well, B, C is one of our half steps. Oh, well, then go up one fret. Okay. Okay, what about C, D? Well, C, D, C to D must be a whole step. That's right. What about D to E? I see E, F is a half step, but D to E isn't. So whole step. Boom, look at that. I got to the 12th fret, and I'm at E. So if I get to the 12th fret, and I'm at the same note that I started on, then I did it right. Okay? Okay? We do that again. E. E to F is a half step. F to G, whole step. G to A, whole step. A to B, whole step. B to C, half step. C to D, whole step. And D to... Uh, sorry, D to E is a whole step. Okay? So this... Those notes right there, those are the, the non-sharp, non-flat notes. Now, just know that if you want a flat, if you see G flat, that means you go to G. So you go E, F, G, and you flat, you lower one fret. Okay, the pitch gets lower, you go down. Now, when I would say go down a fret, everybody, when the students would always go up a fret, okay? And I would have to explain to them over and over again. It would take them 15 times before they would go, oh, right, that's down, this is up. Because everybody thinks this is down and that's up, but it's actually the other way around. Pitch is getting lower. I mean, sing this note. Sing this note. It's lower. <laughs> so it's going down. Okay. So, the, so there's there's G. This is G flat. What if I want a G sharp? Well, go to G and go up a fret. Okay. So that's the other two rules. Flats take you down. So if you see A flat, you got to find A and then you go down. If you see G sharp... Or no, if you see, uh, well, G-sharp, that's a good example because G-sharp is the same as A-flat, the same note. And that's called enharmonic. No quiz on that. Everybody take a sip. There won't be a quiz on it. Where's my, where's my mug? There won't be a quiz on this. <laughs> you can order this. Just go to my YouTube channel and any of my videos, there'll be a store and you can order this. You can get a shirt with it. You can get a bag with it. You can get stickers. I think somebody got stickers. You got cups. But this is one of those things where, you know, you probably don't want to be sitting across the table from your significant other having a serious conversation. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't forget X, Y, and Z and you're drinking from this coffee cup. And then they're like, in their head, they're like, it's not going to be a quiz on this. I don't need to remember any of this. And you, you totally, you totally blew it. And, oh, whatever was in there. Whatever was in there just fell out. I don't know what was in there. You totally blew it in the relationship game. Okay. So... Um, we're we're going to do the same thing with the A string, but basically by learning the E string, see, I learned, oh, well, but this is B, so this is, that's a B chord. See, there's a G form, A, B, okay? If you want to, you can start to go up and, and totally start to name the chords. Not, these are not difficult, not difficult, these are not easy chords to play. This particular one, the G form moved up. Um, I mean, if you get it down, great. You, you'll find a use for it, I'm sure, at some point, but it's, it's not particularly, we're not, I'm not asking you to learn how to play these bar chords. I'm asking you to, to visualize these bar chords, to see these notes on your fretboard, and make sure you've got a, a fret in between your second and first finger on this one particular. That's actually a really cool chord. It's not the one we You might be saying, well, what chord is that? That would be a C. Is there a five in there? No, so this would be C augmented with a flat nine and a sus. But it's not really a sus because I got an E there too, so add 11 maybe. Anyway, 
something, something we will never, ever, really ever need to know. It sounds a little bit. It's just something every guitar player does when they learn the E chord. Olé! Sounds Spanish. <laughs> Spanish, all Spanish music boiled down to one shape. <laughs> totally not true, <laughs> but it does, it does. It definitely has that. It does have that kind of Western Spanish kind of vibe from an old movie or something. Okay, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of what's going on. Okay, anyway, so by learning this, uh, nah, 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 if I know that's a C note, then this is also a C major chord. Okay, so learning this first string here is, is a good thing. Um, and I, I, I've done videos on learning your fretboard and how to do that. But one of the things you can do is you can like um, take some note cards, like 12 note cards. You could do 15 if you wanted to um, and write E, write F, write F sharp, write G flat, all on separate note cards, G flat, G, G sharp. A flat, A, A sharp, B flat, B, C. Write all those down and ultimately be 15. Um, and uh, they're 12 notes, but there's, there's an harmonic notes. Like we have two names for some of these. Is it 15 or maybe 17? We have E. No, I think it's, is it 17? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17. So ultimately, all 17 note cards, shuffle them up, randomize them, pull it out, and it says E flat, and you got to go E flat. Uh, e, F, F, F sharp, G, G to A, whole step, A to B, E, C. It's ultimately going to be this slow, or originally, initially. C to D is a whole step, D to E. Okay, so there's E, so E flat is here. I picked the hardest one just randomly. I don't know why I did that. Let's say I pulled out an A, okay? I go E, F, E, F is a half step. F to G is a whole step. G to A is a whole step. There's A, okay? It may take you that long at first, but eventually you'll be like, pull out the card, A, oh, it's right there. C, oh, here. Okay, C sharp, oh, it's right there. G flat, oh, that one's uh, here. You know, it'll, boom, boom. You'll eventually get it fast. Do the same thing with the A string. Now, I would do this with all six strings, um, and all of those rules there, they apply to all the strings. So you can use them to all the strings. So like, let's say I pull out an A, okay? And I go, okay, A, E, F, G, A, there's A, okay. Next string is A, okay, but that's cheating. Let's not use an open string. So an octave up is, here's A, there are 12, okay. Okay, the next string is uh, Eddie, e, Eddie eight dynamite goodbye Eddie so this is dynamite so this D so D to E is a whole step and you'll work up the the D string until you get to the A wait no there's the A okay and then same thing with the G you learn you know you use these rules here to find the note on every string you could do that as well but really right now if you just do the bottom string and then do the A string so if you do those two uh, if you do those two strings, then you'll be, like I said, four-fifths of the way to having the roots of these shapes within eyesight and memorization and in your hands, okay? Um, and that'll help. So like on the A string, we have A here. Uh, a to B, A to B is a whole step, right? We have A to B, so B would be two frets up. And then we go B, C, that's one of our half steps, so we go one fret before Christ, B, C. And then C, D is, uh, is a whole step, all right? So we're going to go C, that's going to be two frets. There's D. So again, there's the D, there's the D chord, A form. So whatever note this is on the A form, that's, you put your first finger on the, on the note, and you make the A form, that's going to be that chord. So this is, this is D. If I want D sharp, oh, sharp means go up a fret, raise one fret, you go there, there's D sharp. AKA E flat. If I go to E right here and then flat it, there's E flat. Not a fun chord to play, but not, you know. It happens. If you play with horn players, you're going to get E flat. Okay. Now, 
Um, the same thing is true with the, the C form, the C form. So the root note on the C form is here on the pinky, but on the fourth, on the fifth string. So that's also, so here's D. Okay, so that's the root note. So if you know where, where the notes are on this string, you can find the C form and the A form. If you know where the root notes are on the bottom string, you can find the G form and the E form, okay? So like I said, you're four-fifths of the way there. If you if you go on to learn the D string, which makes sense, okay, once you learn the bottom two strings, you've learned uh, three of the five, or th three of the six, because the top string is the same as the bottom. If this is F, though, is this, this is F. If this is B, this is B, okay? Assuming you're tuned, standard tuning. You're not going to go to any other tune. Uh, so... Um, Thank you, Joseph. Yes, I'm aware that uh, yeah, there's chords out there with just three chords, or songs with three chords, four chords. Okay, so um, so so if you go on to learn the D string, then you'll be able to find all the D shapes. Okay, for those, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, my main goal for you would be to just to kind of maybe be able to kind of half half fast. <laughs> I, had a, I had a friend whose wife, would, his fiance, they were going to a Bible study when they were like a couple's Bible study. And she kept saying, you know, when the first, the first Bible study, the very first one, they're like, we can't do this half fast. She thought it was half fast. She didn't know what the saying actually was. And uh, <laughs> she, she was saying half fast. And, and afterwards, her her fiance was like, baby, you can't really, you shouldn't say that in a, a Bible study. And she said, what? What's wrong with half fast? <laughs> so he had to explain she was mortified that she'd been saying something else the whole time. Uh, so just another way to say the same thing. Okay, but we don't want, you know, you don't, you can, you can do this half fast. I'm fine with you be, not necessarily being able to nail these bar chords. Now, you should be able to play the E form and the A form. Those are, those are very, very usable uh, bar chords that you will find very, very handy many, 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 many times. Um. Okay, so that's, that's definitely um, something worth, worth working on. Um, but uh, for this week, you know, main thing is just to start to see the shapes up and down the neck and then maybe memorize the bottom two strings. And as a extra credit for all you, uh, all you people that have to get the, you know, uh, <laughs> extra credit and extra points and make the teacher happy, you can learn the D string. Uh, yeah, memorize, just memorize the bottom two strings at this point, Alejandro. Don't worry about all the strings. I mean, I... I would love for you to memorize the fretboard, but you may not use all. You may not use the knowledge you will be spending time on, particularly on the G string and the B string. It may not. It'll be handy down the road, but initially, when we're trying to find these shapes up and down the neck, um, it's really the bottom two strings you want to specialize in. If you're really good at memorizing, then go for it. Okay, that's not me. <laughs> I'm really bad at memorizing. And like I said, I had these note cards. Actually, I had little teeny tiny pieces of paper in a little box that I would shake them up in and then pull them out one at a time. And I would pull out A, and I would find an A on every string, you know. And I did it until I could find, you know, and I would pull out F. Okay, F, I need to find an F on every string. And I would do that. And it took me, you know, initially it took me, okay, there's F, but then where's the F on this string? Oh, it's right there. Okay, where's F on this string? You know, it took me a while. But eventually I got to the point where I could just find the Fs like that. You know, as fast as that. Um, so what you, um, so that would be one of the assignments. And then as you do that, okay, as you start to work on learning the fretboard, say you pull out a card and it says C, and you go to the low here and you play a C. Don't just, don't just memorize that that's a C, okay? Uh, go ahead and play the E form. But that is a root, and no, and look at that and go, that's a C. And then play the G form, and if you can't play this, that's fine. You can just kind of kind of put your hand in the neighborhood and go, okay, that's G form. You know, again, you want to make sure that you're you have a fret between your second finger and your first finger, though. Okay? 
And then the same thing with when you start working on the A chords or the A string, say you learn, uh, you get, you get okay, here's E on the A chord, okay, on the A string, sorry. There's the E, so don't just learn that that's E, also make the A form, because A form is one of the ones that uses the A string, and make the, D, uh, the C form, that's the other one that uses the A string as its root, and know that this is an E chord, and this is an E chord. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. You're learning a couple strings, you're learning the notes on a couple strings, and then you're starting to see the shapes up and down the neck. Okay? <clears throat> what I want to do is maybe next, if I, next week if I do more on this, or we may go back to reading, I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to, I don't want you to forget any of the reading stuff, so I want you to go back in these videos, uh, go back, to, go to, I, I pinned the Discord invite, let me, let me post it, I'll, Bruce, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Put the dis I'll put up the Discord link. That way, it's not. It's a little cleaner looking. Um, so here's the Discord link. The reason you would go there is to join the Discord group. Uh, try to when you, if you do join the Discord group, try to use your same handle that you use on YouTube, so we know who you are. Uh, you may otherwise you're probably going to have to say, oh by the way, I'm so and so every time you post something on Discord. But you don't even have to post anything on Discord. You can purely go to Discord. Purely just to go to, oh, wow. go to Tom's less, go to Tom's lessons and PDFs, and um, there you can uh, download all of the stuff, all of the lessons because we've been we've been doing, so you can download these pages, and print them up, and have and see some of these look complex and they are so if you go to the first lesson we did on reading, there's the first one that's super duper easy. Okay, super duper easy for the most part. Uh, you can go back and watch that video and go to the Beast Street. And I, you know, there's a lot of reasons to learn how to read music. Um, like I said earlier today, you know, every other musician, except maybe drummers, you know, generally when they learn their instrument, they learn on, on music notation. They don't learn tab. Um, you know, violinists, uh, um, cello players, flute players, trumpet players, trombone um, piano players, even bass players, they all generally will learn how to read music. And so it's helpful for you to have that, a basic knowledge, if nothing else, of music notation. Doesn't mean you have to be able to sight read some insane thing, um, but it's certainly helpful to have, um, a, a basic understanding of where notes are and things like that uh, on the staff. So that you can talk to someone if you're working with a, say you're doing a gig with a flautist for a wedding. Uh, it comes in real handy. Um, so, um, thanks Salvador Marky, uh, Marley, the coolest name in the history of YouTube. <laughs> triangle players, yeah, exactly. They, they, trust me, triangle players know how to read rhythmic notation at the very least. Uh, yeah, all the percussion, all the percussion players know how to read rhythmic notation. Um, and that's one of the things that doesn't that tab doesn't really include usually is the rhythm. You know, you, it'll say six on the third string, and you'll be like, okay, that's I, I know where that is, um, but it doesn't say how long, how long do I hold that note. Whereas music notation has all that information in it, and music notation has been around for hundreds of years, so it's it's um, uh, yeah. If you want, if you can slam that like button, I'm glad we've got. It's been, it looks like it's been in the green most of the time. I don't think we've, have we ever had any stream health? We have not had any issues, so that's good. Uh, 43 people on right now, that's awesome. Um, so, um, uh, but, uh, but, 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 but what, what I would like to do is maybe create, uh, I, can, I can put um, on the neck, on the fretboard, all of these shapes on one fretboard so you can see them. I could do it maybe starting, I could do five of them starting on different, um, starting with the C chord and doing all the C shapes up the neck and start with the A chord and doing all the A, sh uh, A chords up the neck, doing the G, uh, G chord and then doing all the diff all five different shapes up the neck from that. I could maybe do that. It'd take me a while to create that. Um, but Ultimately, the connectivity of all of this is what you're doing. So, uh, so for example, um, I don't think I have any. No, I need to open up. 
Oh gosh, I've been going two hours, you guys. That's crazy. It's gonna open up this thing. Hold on, I gotta turn this off just in case I'm gonna. Um Hey Franco, good to see you. God bless you too, my friend. All right, so I'm gonna have to go <laughs> because promo is already already looking forward to the next lesson. I'm gonna have to do lesson number two on uh, the next lesson. Two twenty will be on also on Cage Method. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't want any of these. I just want this. I don't want you to hear. like this. Okay. Okay, so, so this is a D major triad. I think you hear that. So here's an example of how I might use Cage Method for soloing. So this is basically a D pad. A pad is a uh, generally a term, uh, a, a keyboard term for just finding a sound that sounds good if you hold it down and let it ring. It's a pad. It can sustain. Okay. So. Maybe I'll start and open the D shape. But right away when I do that, yeah, I'm still C in the D shape, but actually technically now I'm in the, in the C form, D chord. But then I might slide up and boom, now I'm in, now I'm visualizing this A form D chord. And every one of the shapes kind of lends itself well to different like licks. Like That's not necessarily a, a lick I would do in, in this shape. You can't, can't do it. So. And I might find that T major scale. Now I'm visualizing this, uh, the G shape, which is after the A shape, G caged, and this is, but this is a D chord. I might start seeing uh, some of those pentatonic major, or I might go dominant, or major. Go bluesy, okay. All within this, those are all licks that I kind of gravitate towards when I'm thinking, visualizing this G, the G form. Okay, now I'm going to go up here. Now I'm this is the E form, but it's a D chord. Those are all like scales and licks that I see, you know, that I can visualize. And so I can, when I'm soloing, uh, here's C, A, G, E. You could watch this sec section of the video multiple times and you go, oh wait, he's, oh, he's, because I'm just going to random play over this. Okay.
Yeah, the chat doesn't show up for 24 hours typically, so. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Show. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing is I'm going through those different shapes over this D chord. Okay? And so you can literally go back and try to go watch my hands and go, oh, wait, he's in this, you know. <laughs> and it eventually they become so connected that you see the connection as much as you see the individual shapes. You know what I mean? Uh, so instead of actually maybe seeing this shape and then this shape, I'm kind of seeing them both at the same time and I'm kind of working around it. In fact, I've been, you know, I've been showing in my most recent videos, I've been showing you something called three per scales, three notes per scale. So the, well, that scale actually goes across two different shapes, the, the A shape and the, and the G shape. And also, like I said, these could come up. These could come up with. Uh, you could use these shapes to come up with good rhythm parts. So I could go. So right there, I did the D shape to the E shape to G shape. Starting on the A shape, going to the G shape, to the E shape. So the, the pad is just a D, D and E, F sharp. Uh, there's an F sharp in there. I can mute the F sharp so it's just a D. There's no tonality, no major minor tonality. It's just D's. It's like I played this. So now I can go. I can go D minor on it. Which here's D major. Here's an A form D major. Well, D minor is this. But the nice thing about just having root and a fifth on a chord you're playing over, you can you can determine the tonality by what you play over. Yeah, all major sounding, but then I go to minor. Minors shapes and sounds, and all I have to worry about is is not clashing with the D and the uh, the A. But even then, I can, I could go uh, I could go Phrygian. Sound more exotic. Back to major. I could go to some Hungarian. Harmonic minor or whatever. So yeah, it's it's um it definitely is a the cage method is is a, a, a definitely it's not a crutch, it's just a, a way of seeing your way around. Ugh, sorry, I'm getting my windows in order here. My gardener here? No. 
it's just an airplane. Um, but it's, uh, it's a way of um, visualizing your fretboard, seeing your way around the neck, uh, because the guitar is such a weird instrument that way. It's not symmetrical, unfortunately. We, we're not tuned in fourths or fifths. We're tuned in fourths and then a major third. So if it were tuned in fourths, it would make mo all of these chords impossible to play. There's a reason the guitar is tuned the way it is. However, um, it does make it difficult um, to, to uh, navigate and see all, you know, and, and, and to improvise over. So hopefully... Um, Let's see. Um, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Um, yeah, how am I creating that pad? It's just in logic. If you know, hey, Vito, you know, long time no see. Um, I don't even know what the sound is. It's in logic. Let's see what is it. It's just. Oh, wait. I gotta be here. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a software that comes with logic called Alchemy, and the sound is called Infinity Pad. That's also So I'm just playing different notes. It's just, a, it's just, it's, you know, uh, if you have an Apple computer, it comes with GarageBand, so you, there's definitely, um, gosh, I can't get my windows in order because the the OBS icon looks just like the logic one, so I keep hitting the logic one. Okay, um, uh, so um, that's um, uh, um, one you know one way you can kind of create a pad. It's just using yeah, it's just it's just finds you know usually like in in software programs, computer programs, they'll have a, They'll have it broken up into lead, pad, bass, that kind of stuff, rhythmic stuff. So you can just pick, oh, pad, and it'll it'll have a million different options. And you just scroll through them until it took me a while to find this one. I like this one. I mean, it's a little sweepy. I'd like it if it just stayed on that initial sound. You know? If it just stayed on that, it would be nice, but it kind of does a sweepy thing. Now here the sweepy thing changes as you go higher, so. It's a little sweepier. Yes, sweepier, down low. That sweep tends not to be so abrasive. I mean, it makes it interesting sounding, but I could probably turn that off if I opened it up and went, um, so now I can't find, okay. So I go into the software and it, you can adjust anything and I click on advanced and then there's probably a way I can turn, uh, see there's a filter if I turn that off. So if I turn that off, see what happens. Now yeah, it's still doing that. That's not where it's coming from. But yeah, there's, it's, just, <laughs> it's really, it's like a million knobs. So at that point you're like, uh, okay, which one of these knobs makes it go weak, weak? How did it go, Tom? Weeshk, <laughs> weeshk. Yeah, I think, Holly, you've got some stuff up on... Uh, did you... You posted a... Have you posted anything up on... Uh, on... Uh, on the Discord? So, okay. I'm going to sign off. Uh, next Monday, we'll, we'll talk more about this. Maybe I'll do, a, um, some charts where we can have all of the, uh, five, maybe five different visualizations of the fretboard using the five different shapes, starting on the five different shapes. So it'll be the C shape and then how the A shape connects and how the G shape, and then maybe start on the A shape and go from there. Um, we'll see. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but that's, uh, <laughs> I may go back to, we may go back to doing this. I do not forsake this. If you guys can go back and do reviews on this, please do. You can download these uh, charts for free at the. At, uh, you can see them in my uh, Tom's PDFs uh, lesson PDFs th uh, tab on Discord. So go there and do that. And then uh, we had a great showing today. Again, talking about. I think the cage method is a big, very popular thing. Um, but uh, I will. 
talk more about it um, next Monday and, um, you know, see if we can keep building this thing. I'd love to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I was hoping to be there by the end of the summer, but boy, it, it just, my, my view count really dropped off again. That's part of the problem of having, at, at one point, 70 or 80% of my views were from one video. Uh, you know, getting one of those, getting one of those popular videos on YouTube is like catching lightning in a bottle. It's very difficult and trying to do it twice is even more difficult. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I know people that play, use GarageBand. You can actually, I think you can actually run your guitar through it and it has amps in there and everything. Uh, so GarageBand is, it's funny because when they did a big major update on Logic, once Apple bought it, um, they made it look like GarageBand I was a little upset. Because I'm like, I already have GarageBand, but it's still Logic is great for $200. It's one of the most feature-packed um, softwares. Uh, they have to be losing money on it. This is no way they're making money on Logic because they don't even have the option to buy stuff for it necessarily. They don't really aren't marketing to you at all all the time. Uh, so it's amazing. So, okay, Alejandro, do your homework. <laughs> Sorry, I took up two hours of your of your Monday, but. Uh, Everybody, take care. God bless you. I will see you next Monday, Lord willing, and uh, we will pick up where we left off. Sorry, my office is such a mess. I'm just kind of in the middle of too many things. Um, and I will post on Discord and the Facebook and everything if the uh, if that song finally drops on CD Baby. Well, it'll drop not on CD Baby, but on um, Spotify and all that. You can download and buy it if you want. That would be great. I would love that. Um, but you don't have to. You can just add it to your playlist and uh, put it in some playlists just for, you know, you may have a, you know, playlist that are a variety of things. Um, and my song will just be a happy little song in the middle of all your playlists. So I've got more coming. Again, most of my songs are going to be instrumental. I don't really have any plans for a vocal piece, but there's a couple vocal tunes that I've written. I mean, I've written millions of those, but uh, there's a couple that I, I, I'm fond of that I might be interested in releasing, but I just have to get a vocal performance that I like. And that's really, really, really difficult. So, uh, yeah, Presonus Connector uh, Computer Studio One for free. Studio One is great. Lots of DAWs are, are all free. A lot of DAWs are free. The thing about Logic is it comes with so much, so many softwares and strings and everything that you almost could never have to buy anything else. Um, so, <laughs> you're not my mom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 sometimes a cluttered office can be an indication of a cluttered mind. Other times it can just mean I'm busy. Uh, sometimes it's about both. Oh, you know what? It's funny. I, I never did post the Discord. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't replace. So it's too late now. <laughs> but there we go. All right. So I'll see you guys in a week. And, uh, yeah, have fun with this. Uh, and, and start to see, just start to visualize them. That's all I'm asking you today is just kind of just start to see those shapes up the neck, okay? You don't have to memorize anything necessarily except maybe you learn the bottom string and the, and, the, uh, and the top string. I mean, sorry, the bottom, well, bottom string, you learn the top string, the bottom two strings. Try to learn the notes on the bottom two strings, memorize those. You'll find that to be greatly helpful. And if you want some extra credit bonus points, Aslan, you're still there. Uh, in lieu of a, of a test, you learn that D string too, okay? And you'll start to see patterns on the E string and the D string that they're just a whole step apart from each other. So it won't be hard to learn the D string once you know the E string, okay? I think the G string is always the hardest one to memorize because it just is a little weird, but okay. And plus, I just like saying G string. <laughs> All right, everybody. On that note, take care. I'll see you next week.